guys welcome back to my channel it's been a while i know i'm sorry i just had my daughter eden seven weeks ago so it's been a little bit of a crazy ride um but i'm back i'm planning on being consistent i have two months worth of videos planned out so yes for right now i plan on uploading mondays and wednesdays in the future, I want to start also uploading on Fridays and I want to start vlogging. But we shall see how that goes. So today I'm going to be starting a series on labor and postpartum. So it'll be five Mondays in a row. It'll be five Mondays in a row and each Monday will touch a different subject within that bracket. Today I'm going to be sharing my labor and delivery stories. I have my laptop here with notes in case I forget because it was crazy as heck. So. I started going into labor on June 7th at around that whole day I kind of had a bit of contractions here and there but I thought they were just you know nothing I had been having contractions for like a week a few weeks actually at that point so I didn't think anything of it I was like no you know she's not gonna be born today later that evening at around 7 30 I lost my mucus plug and then I was like so excited I told my husband about it but you know research says that it can be anywhere from a couple hours after you lose it to a couple weeks for you to have the baby so I didn't want to get my hopes up but I did I was like super excited and I just kept monitoring and then I started to have bloody show and it kept increasing and increasing so then my husband and I had been fighting a cold for about, at that point, it was two weeks of me fighting it, and it was almost three weeks of him fighting it. It was really bad. So he took a night quilt to fall asleep, and I'm just there awake, still getting, contra I'm getting contractions, and they're, you know, they're a little intense, but they weren't, like, really painful. Kind of just reminded me of period cramps. And I normally have really strong periods so I was kind of used to it so then so then we you know he he knocks out because he took NyQuil and so I'm like we were watching TV he knocks out because he took NyQuil so I'm like just turn off everything you know you're tired you're sleepy let's just lay down and so we're both he's knocked out I'm laying down in bed but I can't fall asleep because I keep having contractions and I keep going to the bathroom to kind of like read through them and stuff but he he didn't even notice and after a while he did notice and he he was like are you okay and I'm like I'm just gonna go use the bathroom I'll be back and so after a few hours of like constantly going to the bathroom um, I started to monitor them on my phone on their contractions app and they were 10 minutes apart and I was like okay this is probably still nothing like you know you don't want to get your hopes up and so then all of a sudden I kept tracking them close to 11 they started being like one minute apart but they weren't super intense at that point like they were intense you know they just felt like period cramps they just felt like period cramps so then um kept monitoring them and they were you know pretty consistent and so I decided to get up and just walk around the house and stuff and so around maybe one o'clock in the morning they started getting more intense and I was walking around the house just walking and walking and time just flew by pretty much and so I'm walking around the house and these cramps started getting the contractions started getting intense and I had to, I was like breathing through them they weren't I have a really high pain tolerance so I don't think they were super painful but they were intense it's the best word I can use to describe them so around two o'clock I called the midwife and she said oh you know you're a first time mom your labor can probably you know gonna take a while pretty much is what she said 
and she's like you're probably just you know you're just entering into it sounds like you're just entering into active labor right now it's going to be a while before you know call me back in two hours and we'll see where you're at and then we'll see if you should come in or not and um yeah though they were intense so around 2 30 i woke up my husband and i was i told him what was going on and he like saw me go through contractions and he was like oh no he's like i think that midwife was wrong like we need to go to the hospital now so i'm like let me just take a shower and see if that helps with the contractions and stuff and you know you get ready and whatnot so i took it i was in the hot water and that did not help at all it did not ease the intense I, tenseness of the contractions like it was just not working then you know i got ready i brushed my teeth i got dressed and he's like you know what let's go to 7-eleven get some snacks for me and you you know because it's gonna be a long time you know get some snacks because you know in the hospital they provide me food but they don't provide him food so and he's like and then you can decide you know it's on the way you can decide if you want to call the midwife and go to the hospital so i'm like okay they're really intense and really they're probably coming every minute or every 30 seconds it felt like and so we go to 7-eleven the whole car ride like he was talking to me trying to distract me they were intense kept arching my back to try to feel better thank god i didn't have any back labor at all thank god and then we were in 7-eleven he's like asking me what snacks you should get and i'm like i don't know just get something and um and so i had one contraction while i was at 7-eleven and i'm like wearing a shirt that's like too small for my belly like my belly's like popping out and stuff and the guy at 7-eleven is looking at me like why is this pregnant woman at 7-eleven at 2 30 in the morning well it, by then it was three o'clock in the morning so then i call the midwife and i'm like you know what yeah it was three o'clock i was like you know what like we decided that they're too intense and we're going to the hospital now she's like okay i'll meet you there so we got to the hospital around 3 30 and we walked to the front door you're supposed to walk to the front door um ring this little bell they have and then the security guard would talk to you through it and he tells us because there's another lady waiting there i don't know she wants something with the lab and he tells us that we have to take the elevator in the parking garage all the way to the third floor where he should have just let us in like they said he would so i'm like walking oh my gosh these contractions are so intense i want to cry so we're walking to the elevator and then when we get upstairs my husband puts me on a wheelchair and we go to the labor and delivery ward and you pick up a phone you tell them why you're there and then they let you in and then you go into the triage part and so we're there we're waiting for someone to come triage me and I just feel horrible. I feel so nauseous. I just threw up on the floor. And then I went to the bathroom. Because I did not make it to the bathroom. So when I went to the bathroom, there was my underwear was like full of blood. But it was like blood with mucus. And I was like really scared. Like I was like panicking. I'm like, is something wrong with my baby? So apparently, you know, that means that you're, you know, you're dilating and you're pretty your face. And so then, you know, I'm sitting in the triage chair and, you know, they ask you so many questions and it's like, I'm in labor, I'm having contractions and why are you asking me all these questions? Like my husband's name, where does he work? all of these things i can't even remember where do i work what's my occupation all of this stuff and i'm just like i would need to have this baby already like it was so annoying so then finally she's done triaging me and 
the one of the another nurse comes, another triage nurse comes, and they put you in this room, and obviously to monitor the baby and whatnot. And so you're there for 20 minutes monitoring the baby, and then you can go to the actual delivery room. And so she she tells me it's natural, the blood and mucus, and it gave me a little bit of relief because I was panicking. And so I'm there for a few minutes, and she asking me all these questions and I'm like going through contractions, I'm being monitored and she's asking me all these questions which I can't even remember anymore and it was hard to think and go through the contractions at the same time because they would call me consistently like intense as heck. So then the midwife finally gets there and then you know she's like how are you doing and I'm like in labor how do you think I'm doing so then she checks me and she's like you're eight centimeters dilated I don't even know how the phase that was at that point and I was like oh, yes because you don't want to be that person that goes to the hospital like nobody wants to be that person that goes to the hospital and they send you right back home because you're only like two centimeters or three centimeters dilated so I was so grateful so then I had to wait, I think, 10 more minutes till the whole 20 minute period was over so that we can go. I chose not to have any monitoring for the baby. I wanted like as little intervention as possible. I really did want to do it naturally. I want to prove to myself that I could do it naturally. So after that, then she takes us to the delivery room and another nurse then we get a delivery nurse and a labor delivery nurse she comes in and she hooks me up but i'm like standing next to the delivery bed and i get a contraction so i start swinging my hips side to side trying to like go through it you know and then um then she leaves and she comes back and she's like, oh, they told me that you didn't want any monitoring. So she takes it off and then she gives me the labor ball to kind of labor on. So then I labor on that. And at first, the first contraction I did with it, it felt like it was healthy. But then the second one was like right away and it was like super intense. I was like, oh no, this is not helping. I had to get up and like swing my hips side to side. That was the only thing that was helping with them being so intense. And so then I decided to move all the way back to where I was at, at the other side of the bed and holding on to it. And then I had a really strong contraction and I, my body started to push. And, I, and my husband was looking at me and I'm like, babe, I'm pushing. And he like panicked and pressed the nurse button. He was like, she feels like she needs to push. So they run in there and they asked me to get on the bed which is like horrible to do when you're like having that intense contraction so I got on the bed she checks me and was nine and a half centimeters dilated at that point she's like do you want me to wait break your water because my water hadn't broken at the, hadn't broken at that point so I was like yeah go ahead so she breaks my water and it did, it wasn't like a gush it was just like a little bit of water came out like it was not a gush at all and um then i was 10 centimeters and she's like you're ready to push so they prepared everything and i'm like going through contractions and stuff and she said you know push on the push through the contraction so that's what i started doing i have no clue how long i push when you're in labor like you lose track of time like time just flies by like it all seems like it's in five minutes um, so I started to push and um, then her head started they're like oh we see the head and I didn't when you, when the head is there it feels like it felt like I needed to pass a bowel movement but it was her and so I it felt like her head was down there forever like they're like oh we see the hair and my husband said that her head kept coming you know like see it and then it went back in so 
I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And she's like, you know, push as long as you can and then relax. So I, like, as long as you feel the contraction. I stopped feeling the contractions, but I was pushing because I was like, I want this baby out. So I kept pushing and pushing and finally, like, I pushed and it hurt so bad because her face and her head were coming through. Like, I could feel her face. It was horrible. And that's when I was like, I give up. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, you can leave the baby in there. It's okay. Like, I wanted to give up. And so, they are like, no, you can do this. You can do this. So, I kept pushing. I just pushed as hard as I could. It took, I don't even know how many pushes. And finally, she came out. I was like, so happy. She finally came out. And my husband said, for me, it just felt like her whole body just threw out of me. My husband said that when her head came out, the, the uh, midwife kind of like put her hands in there to open it and grab her and pulled her out. And that's when everything else gushed out. And they put her on me. The cord wasn't long enough, so she, you know, was, she was pretty high up, but not, you know, all the way up on my chest and she was crying hysterically oh my goodness she can cry she has some lungs but it was like the most beautiful feeling ever it was like wow this human was actually inside of me like what i created this life it was crazy like i could not believe that there was actually a baby inside of me she was seven pounds and 13 ounces and 20 inches long like mind blown that my baby was that big i was scared that she was gonna be smaller because a lot of people were like oh your belly is tiny and blah 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 you know someone even said i was starving my child because i didn't have a big old belly but she was not tiny. She's definitely not tiny now. And it was just such an incredible feeling. She she nursed like a champ. It hurt. She nursed good. And that, yeah. That is pretty much my whole story. Afterwards, um, they took out the placenta. I always thought you birth the placenta as well but the midwife kind of like turned it and stuff and pulled on it and took it out i did tear i had a second degree tear in two spots so i got about five stitches or something like that and um i also bled a lot so they monitored that it wasn't like a hemorrhage but i definitely did bleed a lot um, yeah, is that it? But yeah, I think that's it for my story. Wow, that was faster than I thought it was going to be. Well, yeah, that's my story. And so yeah, that's my labor and delivery story. Sounds easier than it was. But I do thank God that I was able to do it all natural, no, non-medicated birth. Um, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Eden is completely healthy. I'm healthy, and I thank God for that. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching this video. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I am going to be more consistent. I have a goal in mind. And next next Monday we're going to be talking about what they don't tell you about birth because there's a lot that people don't tell you they just tell you the beautiful parts and, oh you know the baby came out blah, blah, blah. they don't actually tell you those things those details so, so thanks for watching bye